Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Nisbet, and I'm here today with the music director of the Tucson Symphony Orchestra, Jose Luis Gomez, to tell you about our new digital concert season. Hello, everybody. First of all, I hope all of you are safe and healthy. Hello, Ben. Yes, this is a very exciting time because we have prepared for you a lot of great things that now we're going to unveil. So be, be tuned to this. We were thrilled today to roll out our digital offerings, which we are calling TSO Up Close. TSO Up Close will include these exciting programs. TSO Performs, beautiful, safely captured HD performances of great music played by our wonderful TSO musicians. TSO Talks, performances and previews featuring our TSO musicians. TSO Dialogues, interviews between Jose Luis and TSO musicians, as well as interviews with special guests. And TSO Reads, a book club in which we invite audiences to share the experience of reading books about classical music and even have their questions answered by Jose. And TSO Listens, in which we invite our audiences to partake in curated classical music playlists and to join in the discussion of what they hear. So yes, this is very exciting. As you know, these challenging times due to the pandemic has you know, uh, given us the possibility you know, of, of trying to explore new ways to communicate with all of you. And so this is very important for us as well to, 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 to find different channels. And this way you're gonna experience a TSO the way you never experienced it before. You will get the chance to listen to the musicians play, but also you get the chance to know more details about the process, the creative process, about you know all of these fascinating things that happens you know backstage. So um, you you won't be you won't be disappointed about all of these great things. Our first TSO performs concert will take place in October, and it will feature our concertmaster Lauren Ruff in a performance of selections from Johannes Brahms' D minor violin sonata, his last violin sonata. Jose, you and I are both violin players. This is a piece that I have performed many times, and I'm sure you've played it many times as well. How excited are you about this first concert? Oh, I'm thrilled. I mean, this is an opportunity to, to listen to our wonderful um, concertmaster, Lauren Roth, performing a more intimate setting. And this sonata, it, it's, a, it's a sonata that connects deeply to your heart. So it's, it's a, because it's beautiful, it's incredibly romantic. And, and Lauren is a fantastic violinist, but also is a fantastic communicator. So I'm sure you guys are going to be thrilled about her playing. We will also be kicking off our TSO Dialogues in October with two fascinating interviews. You'll do one with Lauren Roth, but you're also going to do one featuring the music director and the concertmaster of the Phoenix Symphony Orchestra, Tito Munoz, and our good friend, Stephen Merkel. Let's talk a little bit about those conversations. Yes, absolutely. I mean, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we have to cancel, well, not to cancel, to postpone our season. And one of the concerts that we postpone for next, um, for next season will be um, the one that Tito was conducting and Stephen was playing as a, as a soloist. And uh, so I thought, let's just bring them back again. As, as maybe you knew that, uh, that, that we had a conversation as well for the Phoenix Symphony not long ago. And this time I thought of bringing the topic of how is it to be a violinist and a conductor conducting a violinist that is a concertmaster, but also the fact that, that Tito and me, we um, experience ourselves the the role of being uh, concertmasters as well so and and having also a conversation with lauren before about the same topic i thought this was this will round up the whole connection of violin conducting and performing you know the, the violin with an orchestra so it's be tuned for this one as well because it's it's more info than just listening to someone playing in november we'll be focusing on the music of wolfgang amadeus mozart and we will be featuring a performance uh, of our members of our wind and brass sections of his very famous Serenade for Winds uh, in E flat. But that's not all we'll be offering you in November. We will have a very special guest interview with another very good friend of ours, bassoonist Martin Kuskman. What can audiences expect from that, I'll say? Well, Martin, it, 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 it's a friend, it's a fantastic bassoonist, but if you remember when, when he played for the first time with TSO, he played the Christoph Giovannidis Concerto. People were amazed about how a bassoon can just become such a such a virtuosic instrument. And and Martin happens to be not only a virtuoso with the instrument, but also a, a fantastic musical mind. So this is a time to get to know him. Also because we wanted to feature him during this season, and we will do it in the next season as our first artist in residence. 
someone that not only will come to play with the orchestra, but also curate a specific program that, that this person will be playing. And, and we designed a yeah, fantastic program for that, for that matter. So um, in this case, we get the chance to explore these ideas and, and you, you get the chance to, to listen to his wonderful um, creati- music creativity mind that he has. And he's a dear friend that, that you, will, you, know, you will love to see again. And as we go from uh, Lauren Roth playing a, a violin sonata, which is just violin and piano, we will expand pretty much as much as we are able to in these trying times up to eight players, the, the wind serenade of, of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. This is wonderful music because it feels intimate and big kind of at the same time, does it not? Yes, absolutely. You know, this, the Mozart serenades uh, were written with such a, such a genius of craftsmanship into to, to making you know the sound more um, more uh, vast than just um, chamber music, so it, it really feels like like a, like like almost like an orchestra. This December, the TSO and orchestras all over the world were hoping to bring to a close their year-long celebration of Beethoven's two hundred and fiftieth birthday. Now, of course. Unfortunately, we're not able to bring you our planned performance of Beethoven's Great Ninth Symphony, but we are able to bring you another wonderful and unique piece of chamber music, his septet, written for strings, horn, clarinet, and bassoon. This is maybe a piece that you're not super familiar with. I happen to love it very, very much. It does contain one very famous minuet that you'll all recognize as soon as you hear it. But that's not all. We have some uh, really exciting Beethoven-related content for you with our up-close offerings. Jose, what can our audiences expect in December and Beethoven? Yes, we, um, in order to celebrate, you know, this, this incredible, you know, um, date, which is, you know, the 250th anniversary of Beethoven's birth, uh, we thought of, of course, doing the Beethoven 9, because gladly, as well, we, we got the chance to finish our cycle just before the pandemic started. So, so as, as you might remember, you know, we did the symphony from, uh, from the first symphony to the eighth symphony, and we kept the ninth for the special week of his, of his birthday, which is the first, second week of, of December. Um, so uh, unfortunately, not being able to play it is it's, it's a huge miss, but there is a way of connecting with this great piece through a listening club. So I thought of the idea of not only discussing about the music, but discussing about the recordings of this fantastic um, symphony. So we're going to get the chance to go through different uh, periods of time uh, of these different recordings from Leonard Person, Karajan, Gustavo Dudamel. And one of the special guests that we're going to have is actually one of the compo- one of the conductors that is in the listening club, in the list of the listening club. And he happens to be my mentor, Pavo Yervi who happens to be, in my opinion, one of the best living performers of Beethoven. You know, he did this wonderful Beethoven cycle with his uh, orchestra, one of his orchestras, the Deutsche Kammerphilharmonie of Bremen. And so we have fixed a conversation with him to go through the experience of, you know, uh, conducting this piece. So you get a chance to speak, to speak to a wonderful, amazing artist like he is, one of the most, I would say, famous conductors right now in the in, in the musical world and so be tuned for this because it's 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 going to be very fascinating to hear all of these great things uh, from him of course december also means the holidays and it wouldn't be the holidays without some holiday music and uh, our wonderful brass quintet is going to offer season's greetings from the tso with the performance of holiday tunes old and new so you won't want to miss that when it's time to get into the holiday mood But as the calendar changes, thankfully, from 2020 to 2021, we will turn our focus to another composer that we all love so very much, that is uh, Gustav Mahler. Members of our string sections will be joined by our wonderful keyboardist, Dean Zhang, in a performance of Mahler's Piano Quartet, a piece that maybe you might not be so familiar with, but it's a wonderful piece of music, and it is also the only piece of chamber music that he ever completed. However, we won't stop with just the performance of his Piano Quartet. We're going to be talking a lot about Gustav Mahler, and we're going to be doing it in some very interesting ways in January. Jose, tell us about what audiences can expect from that. Yes, well, uh, among all these great composers that we get the chance to perform through the seasons, I know Gustav Mahler holds a very special spot in everybody's um, mind and heart because it's, it, it's the composer that people love to listen to, but also orchestras love to play. 
And of course, conductors, we love to, <laughs> to conduct as well because Mahler was a, was a conductor as well. So he understood, you know, the craftsmanship of conducting, but also the use of the orchestra to a, an extent that is uh, it's incredible. Um, so we came with the idea of, of adding a book that was going to be the next book of a virtual, of, in this case, of a virtual book club. I mean, I'm incredibly touched about how successful the book clubs that we have um, launched uh, has been received from, from all of you, starting from the one of Beethoven, with the Beethoven's hair, and the second one with uh, Murakami's uh, book on, on all about music, you know, the conversations with Seiji Ozawa. And so I thought uh, of the next one to be on, on Mahler, but mm, without picking uh, many, you know, wonderful bi uh, biographies that are out there in the market, I thought of one book that I read some time ago that was fascinating because it's, it's a biography, but it's a very personal, very personal biography or point of view goes through a very personal um, and also fascinating um, uh, point of view, which is the point of view of the author called um, Norman Lebrecht. He's a fantastic um, um, uh, writer, um, music critic. He's also the one that always, you know, is giving us a lot of the uh, what is happening around the world of classical music. And he wrote this book that has also a fantastic title. It's called Why Mahler. So we're going to get a chance to 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 get into the mind of of of, of Mahler, but also to get into the mind of of the eye, uh, mind and eyes of, of the modern times perceiving Mahler. And it's, it's a very well-written book, and it has a lot of, you know, detailed information that you never, maybe you didn't know before. And, and also, I'll get the chance to have a conversation with Mr. Lebrecht. So it's going to be one of our uh, future guests interviews. And so you're going to get the chance to listen from the author, you know, all of these great things about that took him into into writing about Mahler, so it's it's be tuned for this one too because it's 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 a really interesting opportunity to get to know more about this fantastic and fascinating conductor and composer called Gustav Mahler. We here at the TSO want you to know that we miss you very much and we miss performing for you, and we want you to also know that as soon as it is safe and as soon as we are able, we'll be back downtown giving you all of our wonderful performances that we love doing. In the meantime, if you love hearing from Jose Luis Gomez and the Tucson Symphony Orchestra, please consider donating to the Tucson Symphony Orchestra today. We are so excited to bring all this incredible content to you this year. We hope you are staying healthy. We hope you are staying safe and that you're taking care of each other out there. And we look forward to seeing you with our TSO Up Close digital offerings very soon. Thank you very much, Jose. Thank you much, very much, everybody, and goodbye. Goodbye.